welcome to 7pm text tutorial for creating your own virtual machine. Today I'm going to be walking you through the steps to create a virtual machine using VirtualBox and then installing Ubuntu 10.10 .10 onto it. So a computer has different things like a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, disk space, and RAM. But the most important part of a computer is its operating system or OS. This OS is what brings together all the other parts. It's what makes things, all the things work together. Now, a virtual machine is a computer within a computer. Uh, so it has virtualized disk space, RAMs, and using this, you can put different operating systems onto the same computer. You can literally run a computer within your own computer. It runs in its own separate window. You can minimize it, maximize it, all these different things. So what is Ubuntu? Well, Ubuntu is a type or uh, is a Linux distribution. You just like you have Windows and Mac, Linux is another OS, and just like Windows has Windows XP, Vista, and Mac has OS X and Snow Leopard, Linux has different things like Debian and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is what we're going to be installing today. So, go ahead and open up your favorite web browser and navigate to virtualbox.org. Once you're there, click on the download link and then download uh, the specific download package for your computer. I'm assuming that you already know how to download and install, so we're going to go ahead and, and go over to Ubuntu.com once you've finished. Once there, click on the big orange download button, and then select 10.10 uh, .10 and 32-bit. Even if you have a 64-bit computer, still download the 32-bit version, because you'll have to change some settings for 64-bit. It's going to start to download an ISO. I'm not going to download it, because it can take some time and I already have this file. Once it's done, open up VirtualBox. Uh, click on the new button and then uh, click on next and type in the name for your virtual machine probably something like Ubuntu Linux as the OS and Ubuntu as the type depending on how much RAM your computer has uh, just give it as much as possible or about half put it somewhere between the green and the red bars click on next and then keep the default values for the next few pages a new window will open and click all the way through it don't change any of these settings once you're finished, click on Finish, and a new virtual machine will appear. Click on the green Start button, and your virtual machine will open up. You're going to find a first run wizard. Click Next, and then click on the folder icon. This will open up a new page. Click on Add, and then navigate to where your ISO downloaded to, probably your Downloads folder. Here's mine, right here. Click on the Open and then select it in your list. Click on open and then this is going to select that ISO. An ISO is like it's like an installation CD. Once you put it in to your computer it's going to start installing. If an error comes up or a notification just click OK. Now Ubuntu is going to start running. Sometimes Ubuntu can take a few minutes to start up the first time, so just be patient. If you see something like this, just wait. Once this window opens up, click on Install Ubuntu. You don't have to uh, download the updates while installing. I'm not going to, just for the purpose of this tutorial. You want to make sure that you erase um, and use the entire disk. Remember that this is its own computer. It's not going to erase Windows or anything. It's going to use its own virtual hard drive. So you want to use that entire hard drive. Select your time zone. Now you're going to type in your name and create a password. This is going to be what you log in with. Click next and then wait for the installation to finish. I'm going to fast forward now to the next step so it might be a good idea to pause and wait until um, you're done installing Ubuntu. 
Once you get to this screen, you're almost done with the installation, but first go to Devices, CD Devices, Unmount. This is equivalent to ejecting the installation CD. If you don't do this, when you boot, when you reboot your virtual machine, it will try to um, reinstall Ubuntu. Then you're ready to hit the restart button. It won't restart your computer, just the virtual machine. When you reboot, it should look uh, fairly similar to when you first booted up Ubuntu, so be patient. Once it's booted, you should see a menu like this. Select your name and type in your password. Ubuntu may look different, but it's fairly similar to Windows. Up at the top you have three menus, Applications, Places, and System. The Applications has uh, all of your programs, just like the Start menu. Places has all of the different folders, and System is where you go to configure your settings. You're almost ready to start using your virtual machine, but there's still a few things that uh, you need to take into consideration. I've plugged in my SD card into my computer. Of course, the same could go for a USB flash stick, but for now we'll use an SD card. As you can see, I can see my SD card under my computer on my host machine. However, when I open up my virtual machine, no SD card shows up. I can see my hard drive and I can see all of my documents. So where did the SD card go? Well, just like you can't plug a, U a flash stick or an SD card into two computers at once, you can't plug your SD card into both your host machine and your virtual machine at the same time. You have to mount it to your virtual machine to use it. Simply go, simply go up to Devices, USB Devices, and then select your, um, your SD card, flash stick, or other USB device. I can no longer see my SD card under my dot under my computer, and it's just opened up in Ubuntu. So now I can access all of my files on any of my USB devices. But you can't see it under my computer anymore. So what if I want to free it back into my host machine? Well, you just unmount it. Go up to Devices, USB Devices, and uncheck it. It will disappear from Ubuntu as though it were unplugged. The last thing to take into consideration is that remember when we set the RAM for about half of our computer's total memory? That means that our computer has just lost half of its RAM, and instead the virtual machine is using it. So you can expect your computer to run a little bit slower when you're running a virtual machine. So don't. it might be hard to do things that require a lot of memory. So this concludes our tutorial on setting up a virtual, an Ubuntu virtual machine under Windows using VirtualBox. To shut down your virtual machine, simply go up to the power button and click shut down. Thank you for watching this tutorial and remember to check out 7pmforums.co.cc, 7pm tech, programming to the extreme.